Welcome, everyone, and thanks for joining this Ask Me Anything session with the Terra's co-founders, Ushri, CTO. Hi, Rob. Hi, everyone. Thank you very much for joining. And Gil, CEO. Hi, Rob. Thank you for being with us. Thank you, everyone, for joining for these two days that for us are very important, and I hope that so far you've all benefited from it. Uh, it's great to have you both here. My name is Rob, and I'm the head of AI research at Infotech a research and advisory firm with over 30,000 clients across the globe. We help companies with their technology strategies, which means anything from investments they need to make, processes that they need to improve, capabilities they need to build. And as you can imagine, they're all simultaneously asking us about their AI strategies. And that's why we're reaching out broadly to AI leaders across the globe to find out which use cases are ready for the enterprise. And we're finding two things that I want to highlight for you in particular. First, there are AI use cases across the enterprise that are now ready for prime time, like yours. Uh, these include solutions for HR, marketing, sales, operations, admin, and of course, IT, which we'll be discussing here today. And the second, we're finding solutions that deliver exponential value. These solutions are plug and play, not particularly expensive, and take the manual labor out of any given task or activity. It's precisely this opportunity to deliver ex exponential value for the IT service desk that excites me most about Atera. So uh, enough about that. Let's get back to our session. I'll be moderating. I'll be taking questions from you live through our chat, so please keep them coming. Uh, and first, I'd like to kick things off with a few questions that we've already received in advance from the Atera community. So let's start with Gerard, who asks, why Atera and not another? Gil? Okay, that's, that's a great question. I think that we are in the age, in the era of AI. And it's upon us, and it's exciting. Uh, but we also, as uh, companies, uh, Terra as well, want to make sure that the vendor that we choose, or the partner, that's where he is, that's where he's gonna take us. Uh, without that, we won't be competitive, we will uh, not be efficient, etc. Atera has been actually working on our AI technology for nine years now. Um, in the last year and a half, we've been uh, working very closely with Microsoft, uh, very deeply with Azure OpenAI. So I think the first point is Atera is an AI company with very deep AI technology that brings th these innovations to our partners. I think that's point number one. I think the second reason why Atera we have 12,000 customers in 120 countries around the world. We are very attentive to our customers. We listen to what you guys need. We see you guys, if, whether or not you're an MSP or an, an uh, internal IT department, you can be a starting MSP or a very large MSP. We have different products and different capabilities to make sure that really we meet uh, your needs. So I think there's those two issues. One is the AI, and this is the era, and you want to choose a partner that that's where he is. And the second is you want a partner that is with you, that understands you and cares. So uh, we're going to get into the products and services sure. in a few moments, but let's start first with the vision. What is your vision for that service desk of the future, and how different will that look from today's? So the, the vision we have, and we've been, we've been working on it for nine years, so we've been investing in, in it, uh, uh, a lot, and the real bit breakthrough came a year and a half, a half ago with OpenAI, uh, is that there's an autopilot that is able to autonomously do all the mundane, repetitive work that is a grind, and you don't like it, and the users suffer from it, etc. So no more password resets, and no more printer issues, and no more software installations. AI can do that the autopilot, that's the first part of the architecture. The second is the co-pilot, where the autopilot and the co-pilot, they work hand in hand. And the co-pilot, when the autopilot is not able to do the job, the co-pilot is assisting you. And you guys are in the middle. So you have the autopilot is one type of helper, and the co-pilot is another type of companion. And y your life changes, because you're not dealing with the mundane anymore but with interesting things, with cybersecurity, with becoming a trusted advisor. So the whole role of an IT professional looks to me like it's going to change now. Sounds amazing, both for IT professionals as well as for end users. Yeah. Uh, Oshri, a question for you. From a marketing and sales perspective, this comes from George. 
is it a wise choice to require customers to purchase third-party apps and tools through the Atera App Center? So first of all, if you purchase through Atera, it streamlines the, the entire process. So if you're running an MSP uh, business, your all billing process, you know, when you're charging your customers and you need to calculate the usages and everything, everything's very streamlined. And if you're in a corporate IT department, you don't have to deal with uh, procurement processes and stuff like that. It's making it much more, uh, much easier. But not only from the sales and marketing perspective, we are all in one uh, platform. And when we add a third party add-on to our system, we deeply integrate it into the, to the system. So you'll have monitoring, easy deployment, reporting, uh, and much more. So there are a lot of reasons why to buy it from Atera, and we have competitive. Uh, I see, so more seamless integration when you yes. purchase through the a center. And also the business side, the, yeah. the pricing is competitive. We try to make it so. And we have a pretty big R&D team that works on the integration of these partner um, uh, vendors, and we try to make it even more seamless, more managed, et cetera. So there's a lot of value there. How large is that partner community, that vendor community that you service? So, so we have a lot of vendors uh, in, the, in the team, but here we have quite a few. We have uh, Malwarebytes are here, or, uh, Threaddown, the new name, uh, Bitdefender, and quite a few others that are really sponsors of this uh, ESET. They're all sponsors of this event. Fantastic. Uh, a question from Alex, uh, for you as, as well, Ashri. Uh, when will the API be available for software queries and alerts? So we discuss it internally, and uh, we've added it uh, to our roadmap. But Alex, if you can share with us uh, the exact use case and why do you need it in the API, we'd we'll love to hear about it. Just drop us an email or just write it in a chat. we we'll love to hear more, uh, more about this. Uh, when you hear software queries, what kind of queries come to mind? It comes to mind that, that uh, they want to know maybe some uh, what uh, the what the software installed on those machines in, in, in the network or maybe to get those uh, the versions or maybe patching information about third party software stuff like that but really like to hear more about it got it here's an interesting question from Jay who asks what does your dream product in regards to a Terra look like it's with the IT person professional in the middle and around him too um, friends, uh, helpers, one is the autopilot, the other is the co-pilot. One can really deflect things and do things for him, just like a helper, and the other really assists him in more complex things. And, and it's a whole new world of managing IT and giving service. And, and I, th there's also two sides of the ticket here. So we have the IT professionals, but we also have the users. And our user, users are used to having long wait times, maybe hours until a first response and hours until a resolution. And suddenly this also changes for them. So suddenly it's seconds until something is solved. And uh, if it's a more complex issue, because of the assistance of the co-pilot, uh, it'll be minutes instead of hours. So on both sides of the ticket, our, what we're visioning, and we're seeing it in the field already, is a whole change in how IT is happening and being managed, et cetera. Do you have a sense yet for how frequently uh, autopilot will be invoked vis-a-vis uh, -vis copilot? Sure. What kind of split is, is there between the two? Sure. What we're seeing now in the field, we have both in the field uh, being used by our customers. Autopilot is uh, able to uh, take care of about 50% of all tickets, and the copilot is able to shorten dramatically the time of the other 50%. So we're really seeing big impact on both sides of the ticket here. Fantastic. That reminds me of research we've done on customer experience, which is similar. Roughly half of the calls coming into the call center can be automated, level one, level two calls. That sounds similar for the service desk. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, exciting stuff. Uh, Joe uh, says, can you share any improvements made to patch management automation solutions for all OSs? Sure. So first, uh, I would say that uh, patch management is a key feature in our system, and we have talented team dealing with it and releasing new features every two weeks. Um, lately, we've released a new uh, 
automation, scheduling system, and we improve the shutdown options. We let now the user decide whether they want to shut down the, the system or not, because maybe they're patched in the middle of the day and we don't want uh, to do a restart uh, during the day. We've added a feedback report to IT automations and patching, and much more than that. Every two weeks, it's hard to keep up, but uh, we do have the feature board where you can you know, get all the updates, vote on your uh, requirement, so feel free to use it, and uh, it will help us uh, also prioritize the features. Also, if you vote on a feature and the feature is released, you'll get notified. So you don't have to Very look nice. for it, and yeah. So it's really important, guys, to to vote there and add suggestions, etc. We go through it all the time. Instant feedback. Are you patching the same apps that can be purchased through the center, or is that a different set? Yes, we do. Fantastic. Uh, Rob, another Rob, not me, asks: <laughs> uh, Will we ever be able to integrate with Google Chat? So. We are now rolling out a uh, webhook system. So with API and webhooks, you can integrate with uh, Google Chat. You will also will be able to integrate with Slack, Teams, and uh, every system that you want. I would just add to that that we are releasing now a Teams app. So you don't need to do the integration or use the webhooks. Uh, if you're using Teams, it's uh, much easier to do. Exciting, get to address users' issues in the apps that they use every day. It makes a lot of sense. Uh, the timeline for this, is this the coming months or? Yes, yeah. Excellent. It's in the in testing phase now. Uh, I know this next question comes up quite often, uh, but Nina asks, how can I get my hands on those pink Atera t-shirts? Okay, so there's a big announcement here. We've just opened a swag store and you can get t-shirts there and caps and bottles and a whole lot of other pink things. Uh, and actually, if you order it now during this uh, session, these sessions, I mean, until the end of the, the whole event, you, there's a 10% discount there. And it, there's great stuff there. So yeah, it's all available now. I just got my moderator's version. So if you guys come <laughs> moderate one of these sessions, there might be a pink t-shirt in it for you too. <laughs> Cool. Uh, Dan asks, what's next for Atera and Microsoft? You've already mentioned Microsoft. Can you share your vision with OpenAI in particular? Um, yeah, I'll, I'll start maybe. We, we've been working for years with Microsoft together. Uh, in the past year and a half, very intensively, both on the uh, technology side, uh, to, to implement OpenAI in a solution that is uh, uh, an IT solution, and uh, actually is an action AI solution, so it can do real things in the real world. But also we've been working very closely with Microsoft and will be on adoption and training and how people are uh, addressing this new uh, revolution, technology, etc. So we work very close with them. I think that Oshri can elaborate a little bit on uh, the technology side where he's working very closely with Microsoft. Yeah, so we are working, uh, as Gil mentioned, very closely with Microsoft. We're, you know, sharing uh, challenges, working on uh, on the actual algorithms and making them um, better for our for our use. Working a lot on security and privacy. We're, you know, following all the latest uh, guides, um, making it much more secure than private. So, yeah. Excellent. Uh, I'm sure that matters to m most of your, if not all of your clients. I want to ask you about uh, ChatGPT 4.0 in particular. We've all been reading uh, some of the headlines recently. What, what have you seen so far? What do you, what do you like about the new release? So um, I think uh, big news is that is now more capable to talk to clients, not only to IT technicians, you know, about uh, technical stuff. We can talk to, to the end users, which is uh, important uh, now that we are working on the autopilot. And there are many capabilities like analyzing real-time video, uh, documents, things like that. Uh, IT technicians dealing with it every day, so it will open new opportunities for us and we are working can on it. Show me where it hurts and we can fix it. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, with what we've been testing with uh, version 4.0 we one thing we've seen the speed it's much faster and that's very important when you're doing a lot of work 
And the, the other thing is that we've, something we've been working a lot, and Osher just talked about it, but when you can imagine that a person that is non-technical opens a ticket, and you, you, we all know what bots look like, but instead of a bot, it says, hey, how are you doing, Rob? Oh, I see the problem, yeah, and it's, uh, the whole interaction is 100% human, emotional, uh, intelligent, and, and the fear, the, the, the you know, uh, they don't want to talk to a bot, they want to talk to a human, but here it feels just like a human. And then it really can become uh, something that will have a lot of adoption. So we actually see this version as one that's very important for so is this a, a game changer or an incremental improvement, or, or is yes. this really it is revolu a, it yeah? is a game changer. Exciting. Uh, last question from the community uh, that was submitted in advance uh, comes from Sunita, who asks, when will the co-pilot and autopilot be ready? Um, so co-pilot is being rolled out as we speak. Uh, it's a preview version. So if you don't have it yet, you'll have it in the next few days. Um, and uh, Autopilot is, is in beta and is going to be released very shortly. Having said that, if you guys are, in, if any of you are interested in being, in working uh, with us and getting Autopilot earlier, getting Copilot earlier, we're going to send out an email today, fill out the form there, and that's going to get in a list that we're going to contact you. Excellent. You guys have been busy. <laughs> You've got releases upon releases. Yeah. Um, now we're going to move to live questions from our auto, uh, Terraverse audience. So please keep posting your questions in the QA tab. Uh, and we'll start with Lee, who asks, will Atera be adopting an ITIL framework for the ticketing system? Uh, we are heavily invested in an existing ITSM system. How, how can we help Lee? So we do follow the ITIL uh, framework now. We are working on queues. I think Tal mentioned it in the, his uh, session before us. And uh, we do try to close the gaps. We know that we have some gaps, and we're working on it. Fair enough. Do you see a lot of clients pursuing ITIL? And Absolutely. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. It makes sense. Uh, from Nathan, at every fireside chat that you've had in the past, people have always asked if you'll provide separate licensing for wall boards or users that just do accounting. Will we ever see these types of licenses? Um, yeah, we know the request, we've heard it. Um, uh, it makes a lot of sense. Uh, we need to look at it. Uh, next, Nathan, next fireside chat. No, I'm kidding. Um, we need to think about it. And Nathan, you know, we, we know you for a long time, so we can chat about it after this uh, fireside chat. It's, it's a valid question. And sorry for my edification, the accounting, is this the accounting side of the uh, service desk or something altogether? No, there's uh, users that are IT professionals in our system, and there's users that are using it for other purposes, not for actually the IT work. Uh, it see. can be uh, the HR department, or uh, and, and they have it on, the guys have it on screens. And in a sense, the system is configured that whoever uses it, there's one type of license. The reason is to keep thing, things simple and not have multiple licenses and multiple prices, et cetera. Uh, it's a valid question. Sure. It's, it's, uh, so FAQ for the organization at large. Exactly. Uh, we see, I, I mentioned customer experience. That's FAQ coming from external to the organization. We see another category. We call it Infotech employee experience, which is FAQ coming from the entire enterprise. Is that part of the vision, or are you really laser focused on service desk for now? No, so we've, one thing we've done, uh, we actually, when we implemented Copilot the first time, one thing that we were getting from users was that they have their own specific IT knowledge base for what's happening in the, in the IT environment. So it can be what do you do with this specific firewall, et cetera. And they wanted the AI to be connected to that database. So when it comes up with solutions, they are very specific to the environment. Mm -hmm. But then the next natural thing was to connect the HR knowledge base and the accounting knowledge base and the marketing knowledge base. And suddenly the Terra co-pilot and autopilot became something you can query on anything, on HR things, on what's my budget for marketing next quarter, et cetera. So we, are actually turn, we have actually turned uh, the uh, Terra autopilot and co-pilot to a multi-purpose uh, helper. Fantastic. It makes a lot of sense. Uh, again, one-stop shopping for all of my organizational needs. Uh, why not? Correct. 
Uh, from Brad, uh, this is a great event. Thank you very much. Uh, are you going to branch out into in-person events? So, first of all, we are going to a lot of events, of events this year, not at Terra's, but we've been to IT Expo and uh, HIMSS, and uh, uh, we've been to Sydney and Brazil and Orlando and uh, all this year, and we're going to be doing a lot more of that until the end of the year. Uh, we do need to do the next time we do an Ateraverse, make it an Atera on the ground verse. Uh, so, and probably we'll do it in New York. I was trying to sell these guys on Las Vegas, so we'll see. No, work probably, is still in I, I'm kidding. The, actually, some people here in the team have committed that if it's in New York, they'll come. So we found that out, and I uh, see. we want. But probably it'll be in a fun place. Uh, uh, New York uh, works as well. Yeah, exactly. Uh, from James, does Atera have any plans on adding Sentinel-1 in the App Center? I think we do have plans. I know that our biz dev are talking to them uh, and trying to make it happen. And uh, this is a very common request, so we'll probably do it. So what determines which vendors make it in, which don't? Is it how willing they are to partner, or, or what attributes do the, the right ones have? I think first... Uh, we listen to our customers and see what partners they like to see in our platform. So that's, I think, the, the most important and then the business uh, side. Yes, they go hand in hand, ideally. That uh, makes sense. Uh, from Jatender, uh, what kind of options do you have for small businesses that don't have huge budgets for security? Sure. So we have a product line that it's specific for small businesses. The cost is really targeted for that. Uh, you should actually look up at, at our website on the pricing page. You'll see uh, the first tier there. It's perfect. Uh, the security vendors that we have, we also have great pricing. Um, do that. You can contact our sales also to get more information. We have uh, plans for small, medium, and large customers. We have customers that are uh, Fortune 500, the, the largest enterprises uh I don't know, th companies from Grant Thornton and Domino's Pizza, Pizza and uh, Georgia Tech, et cetera. So we have huge customers, but we also have plans for really small uh, startups, starting, et cetera. Just look in the website or can't contact our sales team. And, and generally speaking, is this per user per month? What kind of licensing do you offer? Okay, so one thing that makes Atera very unique, that's a great question, we charge per technician that is using the software we do not charge per endpoint like everybody else does. So actually, you can install a Terra, a Terra agents on as many endpoints as you want. There's no limitation at all. It's only the number of technicians using the software that we charge for. So it's very transparent. It's, you can plan around it. There's no surprises, no jumps up and down, etc. And dare I ask, but for autopilot where potentially there are no technicians using the software, uh, how will that pricing work? But autopilot works hand in hand with copilot, so it, they actually work together. And actually, we'll probably be releasing more information on that in the next coming weeks. I see. Okay, stay tuned. Sure. Uh, from Mohammed, what does Atera have to offer for the education industry? Okay, so the education industry, education industry specifically, is one of our biggest segments. Maybe our second biggest segment in terms of uh, importance. So we have a lot of offers there. Uh, I think the best thing, Mohammed, would be to sign up for a talk with one of our sales reps. They'll sit down with you, understand the needs, and really configure the right thing for you with the right costs, et cetera. I've noticed from our own work, education, very decentralized, all sorts of application solutions, you know, varying by department, by you know, course, so a professor. Very complex. It must create a, a extreme pressure on the service desk, I would just have yeah, to think. Very complex environments. And we have uh, a, very, a very large number of our customers are coming from that segment. Right. Interesting. So it's literally thousands. Healthcare as well? Is that large for you? And too? healthcare is large for us as well. Yeah, yeah. same. Yeah. <laughs> uh, from Thomas, uh, as MSP serving multiple industries, or as an MSP, uh, I wanted to know if Atera is suited for industries like healthcare law. We just spoke about healthcare. I'm interested in legal as well, which have such specific regulations. Yes, we, we do. I'll just say, for maybe I'll just put it out there. Healthcare, education, and law are our three biggest segments. Uh, but, you know, we sell to a lot of others, but, uh, uh, and we, have, we are 
HIPAA compliant, GDPR compliant, ISO 27K, SOC 2, et cetera, et cetera. So we really know how to cater and uh, meet all the regulations required for all these industries, all three. Uh, I myself was chief innovation officer for one of the large law firms in Canada. And one thing I remember vividly from that time is when a senior partner has an issue with the help desk, yes. it needs to be resolved immediately. Pronto. Yeah, there's no joking around. Not that there ever is, but yeah. <laughs> uh, I imagine this solution only becomes that much more important in that scenario. Right. right. Yeah, it makes a lot of sense. Uh, from Warwick, any plans for integrating AI and helping with API integration? Yes. So I think uh, first is a, it's a very innovative question. Yes. And uh, I think we, we've uh, played with our uh, script generator and ask it to generate a script that use Atera's API to do something. Mm -hmm. And uh, it is an amazing job. So I would suggest uh, just use our script uh, generator uh, to do that. All right. So ready to start even as we speak. Yeah. Uh, exciting. Uh, and from Hudson, to Gil and to Ushery as well, what made you both go into IT, all the pros and cons of this incredible industry? What, what attracted you both? Uh, our history started actually in the cybersecurity field, and we it's a long story, but we started to talk to a lot of customers, and we were hearing the, the need for an excellent uh, RMM IT management platform. And we really help, felt the pain there. And, and even though we were in security and uh, we, our first product uh, was a firewall, we actually dropped that and switched to what we're doing today. And we, we, you know, when you do something and you feel it's really doing good for the world, I think that's where we've been all these years. We really felt that we're doing something that is alleviating pain and giving a lot of pleasure and happiness and uh, you know, ha the word happiness just actually brings up a, a thought here. We've been doing a lot of surveys and uh, interviews, and one of the surveys we did, we asked um, how likely do you think AI is going to be a significant part of your day-to-day -day IT work? 80% of respondents said it will be. It's going to be a significant part of how we do IT. The more surprising thing, 80% also said that if the AI will take away and do autonomously all the repetitive, mundane work, we are going to be happier people. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so the happier there, and it, it brings happiness. So I'm actually very happy that we moved into IT. It's a good point. I, I talked about exponential value at the outset, but one thing we find pretty common across all AI domains, there's initially some reticence, like oh, will we be losing jobs? Will this take work away from us? And then once folks get their arms around the solution, they realize, no, 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 this makes our jobs better and maybe even more what they initially thought their jobs would be. Less of the drudge work, less of the manual work, more of the thinking, more of the interacting. Uh, I, I imagine you're finding the same. Yeah, uh, and also we know from the IT world that people are overworked. There's a shortage of, uh, of uh, workers, et cetera. So we don't see in any way that AI is going to take away jobs. AI is going to just... The people that are there and doing very hard work will just have a better life, do more interesting things, give better service. That's where we see it all changing. Yes, yeah, so let your uh, service desk act as if it's double the size without actually having to add more, exactly. m more cost or, or more uh, employees to the mix. Exactly. Uh, excellent. Uh, Ralph wants to know, will there be integration with Sophus XDR, that solution in particular? Ashri? Um, I'm not sure that we have it in, in our plans, but uh, again, I suggest uh, Ralph to go to the feature board and vote for it, and we'll make sure that uh, it will be. Is there a list somewhere of what's coming, yes. what's yeah. supported currently? Mm -hmm. uh, excellent. Uh, Gil, you were going to mention? No, no, that's a good question. I'm looking at uh, the <laughs> one Nathan <laughs> just sent over. Here we go. Uh, Gil's yeah, reading my next uh, question one. for me uh, from Nathan. Uh, how do you solve the issue of teaching the AI to handle when requests require approval from certain managers, very interesting, before auto-resolving. Uh, an example, I want to access Fred's mailbox. How do I get the right permissions or make sure I have the right so, so permissions? If it's Fred's mailbox, we don't care. But, uh, <laughs> right. Um, the autonomy of the autopilot is very strict. So there are specific things that the autopilot can do and there's things that it cannot do. And anything it cannot do, it escalates to the copilot. 
and the co-pilot, everything there has human uh, interaction, that ha uh, human approval. So it's actually built to be bulletproof, the autopilot. Everything it does is bulletproof, cannot cause any damage. Anything out of those specific actions goes to co-pilot. There's a human in the middle that makes the decisions and things like that that have to do with privacy, security, access to information. Naturally, the autopilot has no ability to do them at all. Uh, there's an analog, again, from employee experience where I might be able to ask my AI bot about um, salaries for my team members, but I probably shouldn't be allowed to ask about the salary of the CEO. So I imagine you have some of that too, where the security lies in the data layer, not even just the functional layer, if that makes uh, sense. We actually, I can let Oshri maybe elaborate. I'll just say a word. We, it works the other way around. This is what you're allowed to do. Everything else you're not allowed to do. I see. So it, we don't even have to look for, oh, is this case okay or not? Because it's first everything is closed, and then these are the things we open, and those are the things it can do, and that's it. So you assume no unless you're explicitly it, instructed exactly. yes. Exactly, yeah. It makes sense. Uh, from Ed, will there be an AI knowledge base article? So we already have it. Every time you close a ticket, it will offer you uh, to create a KB article out of it. And next time that you have a question or your customer have a question to the AI, an autopilot will use this uh, KB article to answer. I suspected that might be the case. How, how comprehensive is the knowledge base itself? Um, it's actually per customer, so the customers create their own knowledge base or importing their own uh, company knowledge base. Ah, I see. And the, the capability I just mentioned with the ticket helps them build it much faster. And, and what kind of timeline are, is involved in building a knowledge base? Um, it really depends on uh, how many tickets you get and you know the variety of uh, problems, but uh, usually it takes one month and you have enough uh, data in it. I see. So as I'm running my regular operation, co-pilot and autopilot are helping me, and they're populating the knowledge base as we go. Exactly. I'm going to elaborate on that a bit. So you have a ticket. It's, you know, back and forth, back and forth. We fixed this and we tried that. And, and eventually, after two days, something else solved the problem. And then it popped up again. And then we, you know, it could be a very long trail of back and forth and data information and things we did and didn't do. The AI takes all of that in a second, summarizes it, understand what, understands what was the thing that actually solved it, structured it, structures it as a knowledge base article, and from that moment, and it takes a second. You just press a button, it creates it, you read through it to make sure that it's, it's what you want, and that's, it's done. And from that day on, every time the same thing will happen, the AI will know the answer. It's very powerful. Fantastic. There must be uh, issues like this, but are there issues where clients have just told you, man, I can't believe Atero was able to solve this for me? Yeah. So give me, a, give me an example of you know, where your clients were just floored by, by what you were able to do. Uh, we, we, there's one example that we've also shown where you had a case where uh, an employee had a, a, a video call set in the afternoon. Uh, they use Zoom. The person that set up the meeting uh, uses uh, WebEx, Cisco WebEx. Uh, usually they're investment bankers. Bankers still use <laughs> yes. Cisco WebEx. And you don't notice that because you have a meeting and you expect it to be Zoom or Teams. You don't think it's good. And if you're going to get to that meeting and you don't have Cisco installed, you're going to fumble the meeting. It either won't happen or the first 20 minutes are going to be all about trying to uh, set it up. You're not going to be able to install anything because if it's a the corporate uh, company, it, you can't install. Basically, you're going to miss the meeting. The AI is able, is connected to your Office 365. It's connected to your Azure AD. It's connected to your to our agent. It's connected to a repository of software um, that it can install. And we've shown this uh, demo quite a few few times. Uh, you can it'll identify the issue up front, so it'll understand you have this meeting and it's not going to happen because it knows you don't have Cisco WebEx installed. It'll alert you and say, "Hey, you have this meeting. You don't have Cisco WebEx installed. It's not going to happen. Do you want me to install? This is all the autopilot, no human intervention. Do you want me to install WebEx for you? If you say yes, it'll install it." 
and when the meeting happens, it happens seamlessly. So that's an example where autopilot not only solves the problem, it actually is able to initiate the solution. Right, proactively. Right. Proactive, it, it has reasoning. And an and investment banker last minute needing to make a meeting, I don't think would be a pleasant no, experience. No, no, If no, I had to guess. No. Uh, from Joe, uh, we talked a bit about vision, but let's ask again. Your vision for Terra in the upcoming three to five years, that's a large time span, I know. But in particular, uh, acquisitions and mergers that you can see happening. Any thoughts on that? So we're growing very fast. Um, we are, in any case, all the time looking to acquire interesting companies, to add interesting uh, technologies uh, to Atera, primarily looking at technologies. Um, but that's our path. We are uh, here to stay as an independent company. We can see the vision that we become a very large company. Uh, we are a big one today, but uh, we want, we'd like to see 12,000 customers turn it to 120,000. Uh, and that's where we're, we're looking at. And we actively look for acquisitions. And if, they're, if they'll be interesting ones, we'll probably do them. Uh, do you have any acquisitions under your belt already as you've no, built? Nothing, no, no, nothing, no. Nothing, not this uh, minute, no. Okay, but potentially on the horizon, it sounds like it that's a be, possibility. Yeah. Uh, from Hudson, do you have a dedicated IT community for users? And how do you encourage collaboration among IT managers in particular? So we have a great community. Uh, I got your, uh, okay, I'll take <laughs> this one. Uh, uh, so we have a great community that is uh, for Atera customers, and it's very vibrant. There's a lot of discussions there. They, the teams help each other on problems, give advice, etc. cetera. Uh, it's the best way to, to actually do that, just join the community. I you can find it on our website. Yep. Yeah, I would uh, also add to it uh, that uh, we are trying to help IT uh, technicians share inside the product things between them, like scripts that they are using, they can share it in a community, and then with the easy uh, click of a button, they can copy those scripts to their Very repository, smart. and uh, in places that needed, uh, you know, very sophisticated configurations like SNMP monitoring, they can also share to community, so trying also in the system to create a community between our customers. And service desk managers, are you seeing them interact in the community, trying to help each other figure out how to yes, change absolutely. things around? Yeah. They are sharing a lot of scripts, a lot of uh, devices. Uh, yeah. Fantastic. Uh, from Thomas, who's been a client for many years, uh, love your speed of innovation and development. I am worried, though, that your AI developments will make my job redundant. Well, we just spoke about this, so Thomas, yeah, you're uh, not alone. Yeah, we, we can talk can about you, it can again. Can you help him? Yeah. yeah. So th Thomas, first of all, thanks. And second of all, drop me an email. We can talk. Um, th there is no way it's going to take uh, the jobs away. There's very complex things. There's things that require human intervention. Uh, it, it's just going to make you more efficient, make your life better, make your customers happier, uh, and allow you to grow if you want to grow and add more customers. But there is no way that uh, there's so many things that the AI is very far away before it'll be able to take, uh, if ever, uh, our jobs. So there's no concern. On the other hand, the concern is that your competitor will have AI, and then suddenly he'll solve tickets in seconds, and you're going to solve tickets in hours. So there's no way to stop the innovation here. You, this is the right time to jump into it. Uh, we're here to help in training, in setting it up, et cetera, but it, it's really not something that is gonna take away your jobs. Yeah, it's I far from that. said yeah. that well, and that's generally what we're seeing across the board. I mentioned you know, all categories, all functional roles have the same concern, but generally it's the case that it's person plus machine that creates the better result exactly. quicker, faster, cheaper, exactly. and not the machine substituting for the person. Exactly. So that, that appears to be the case here as well. Uh, from Brad, I'm an IT reseller in Europe. Uh, in addition to my support job, sounds quite hectic. Uh, okay. How do you work with partners like Brad? So we have a whole partner program. Brad, go to our website, look for the partner program, put in your details, and the partner team will contact you and uh, take it from there. Uh, we, we love to work with partners. We have a lot of them. Uh, you can also see the partners we have in the website. So, uh, yeah, do that. Do I get a commission if Brad signs up? Or? Uh, no. Definitely. Anybody, <laughs> in my anybody listening today to this session gets a commission if Brad starts selling. <laughs> Excellent. Guys, so. Excellent. Uh, and from Hudson, a privacy obviously a huge issue. How do you keep the privacy 
with AI. So we've mentioned working with uh, Microsoft on, uh, on privacy and security. We have uh, those weekly meetings, you know, telling them about the challenges and things. We follow the uh, responsible AI guidelines. We're working very hard on this. And uh, we're trying to uh, make it as uh, you know, secure as possible using all the latest technologies. And also Microsoft are adding more and more stuff to it. There is now the, uh, it's called Prompt Shield, new technology that you know, um, sits between the user and the AI doing filters, you can add ro rules to it. We're, we're investigating any, any technology out there to, to make sure it, it's secure and uh, private. Excellent, any, any of the common standards that you're pursuing, SOC, ISO, NIST, any, anything like yes, that? Yes, absolutely, but I, I can say that uh, the AI world is, is new. And it right. those uh, SOC, NIST, and everything are not covering everything needs to be done. So our, we are, uh, you know, in the front line. We are investing it, you know, uh, using Microsoft. We are trying to find a solution as, as they go. So, yes, uh, quickly changing situation for sure. That's a good question over there. Uh, so from Rashab, uh, in the beginning, AI will not have an any answers as there's no knowledge base. Uh, no general Microsoft or Outlook related question answer either. So. Um, we are not just basing on the knowledge base. We do use uh, Microsoft OpenAI model. It has all the knowledge base, all, all the knowledge in the world, and a lot of IT knowledge by itself. You don't need to add any um, knowledge base uh, uh, to the system. You would just add things that are specific to your company. So I'll, I'll give an example for uh, for this one. Installing a VPN is something that uh, there, is in a, there is a lot of articles in the internet. You don't need to do anything. Just, you just have it uh, out of the box. But when you install a VPN, you need to provide some specific you know, uh, details about your company. IP address, uh, some configuration, things like that. You can put them in, uh, in the knowledge base. The AI will take it in consideration and combine the knowledge that you have from the internet and your own. So you'll get much tailored uh, solution. Got it. But it sounds like the knowledge base enhances the solution. Yes. The solution is not de uh, dependent on Absolutely. the knowledge base itself. Absolutely. Even without the knowledge base, it will work amazingly. Okay. Uh, time for maybe one last question. Is there any plan to use the new Teams app for end users to talk to Autopilot directly? This is also something that uh, we are now investigating. By the end of the day, they will. We will have it, and uh, we are checking it right now. How broad is that team's roadmap? I imagine there must be a lot of items on there. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. it is. Exciting. Well, I just want to thank everyone. First of all, Gil, Oshri, thank you so much for sharing all of your knowledge. It really is amazing, uh, all the different dimensions that you covered uh, here today. Um, and thanks, everyone, for submitting your questions. I encourage you, please continue to submit them. Uh, even though we don't have time for more questions today, I know Gil and Oshri and the entire team here will do their best to get your response as soon as they possibly can. Um, you can do so either through the support email pinned right here or through social media. And uh, again, thank you for being so candid, for sharing all of your knowledge. I wish you all the best in your journey to fix IT. Uh, I think it could use some more fixing, and I think Atera is well positioned to do so. And to all of you who followed, shared, and engaged with us, thanks again, and looking forward to seeing you possibly in person uh, next year. Thank you, Rob, and thank you, everyone that joined. Thank you. Thank you very much.